and let's talk about Eastern Kentucky. One thing that I like, I, I'm at first I didn't know how to act, not because I'm judgmental or, or whatever. Uh, we did have a person that decided of changing of, of genders. I don't care how people believe about that, but um, you know, a few months ago she started coming around, and at first I didn't know how to act. I ain't never been around that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's still new to this area. Yeah, so I was respectful and all that. But once I got to know her, um, you know, we got talking. And she can outdrive about outdrive about anyone. Um, <laughs> but to see these kids come up to her and her transformation, again, I'm not getting into that. That's, that's This is non-debatable. It's just I respect what anyone wishes to do if they do it in a, what, a correct way in a way that does not change my beliefs or way of thinking, I guess is, a, is how I look at that. Yeah. But there was children coming up to her asking for autographs and thought that her car, which was the cheapest car there, but how she drove it and how it looked, they wanted to sit in it and have her autograph. How do you uh, think that that made her feel? You know on, what I mean? On, on top of the world. Rock star. Because, you know, even where she – I think she lives around the Louisville area. I'm sure she's judged pretty heavily when she goes out in public. Yeah. And probably He's, terrified to come to an area like this. Not because, really. She, she's been around a lot. Uh, she's probably Eastern Kentucky's biggest spender this year. She comes up almost every weekend to drive her car with just multiple car groups just because. Yeah. You know, but she – it's this is a cool thing. That's what I love about this stuff. It brings someone that you think you would never even meet or talk to. Next thing you know, you see that person actually being opened up to and, and getting autographs and making them feel like there's part of the part of the crew versus an outsider. Yeah, I love but, that. But but it also uh, diminishes the stereotypes of our area too, because yes, that's sir. what I was saying earlier. At one time, she might have been terrified to come to this mm -hmm. part of the country because thinking God knows what's going to happen and seeing that these people are some of the most kindest welcoming people on planet earth. And, and I love to uh, get rid of the stereotypes like that. For our absolutely. Area. You know, I, anybody ever asked about, you know, I grew up of course going in the Navy. I was called a dumb hillbilly, you know, how to talk, look at your teeth. Uh, you didn't have fluoride in your water, boy. We can tell, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I had to prove myself daily because I had to work harder than everybody else because the way how I sounded. You know what I mean? Uh, Appalachian ingenuity at its finest. But, uh, you know, I always tell people the stigma of us is their own fault. We allow it to happen. And I really think that stigma is going away. I really do. I do too. You know, again, hey, we're the, we got the fastest broadband internet in the United States, baby. You know, us, us Appalachians have to be doing something right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I always tell people, look, you're going to fall in love with the roads. Our roads, compared to anywhere else in Kentucky, in the, in the country, you know, very competitive with West Virginia. That's the only one I could say is even competitive with. But our people is what wins it over. We have the most genuine, nicest, helping people. Uh, one guy in the old 56 Chevy, did you see that beautiful car? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Friday night, gorgeous. ran out – ran out of gas of course he had to bleed it and then have gas he had seven people that he didn't know this is one thing he was talking about this is a guy is a uh multi multi-millionaire by the way you know what i mean would never know like about that it. i can believe it but you know talking to him and looking at him how he's dressed i would have thought that you know what i mean not yeah. unless i already knew but him talking on a facebook post about how genuine and nicer people are that he had so many concerns and someone, everybody diving in, going and getting a jug of gas and bringing it to him just to help him and help prime his fuel system. You know, he was blown away by that. Guess what you just done? You created that man a second home. Yep. You know, by the kindness and a couple minutes of your life, second home. And that's why everybody's already calling in that rally groups. This is our second home. We feel at home here. Actually, we feel more comfortable here than we do in our town in New Jersey or in Florida. Yeah, I, well, I mean, it's almost like everybody knows everybody right away. Like, yeah. uh, whenever uh, I had some family uh, visit here from the upper part of the country, and I was just talking to random people in Walmart one day, and they're like, 
do you know them? I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. They're like, why do you just talk to random strangers? I'm like, because they're nice. Mm-hmm. We have a good conversation. It's, it's that Southern hospitality, buddy. You can't beat it. Well, well and that's what, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys were from the South that came. They said that their, they thought Southern hospitality was good where they from. They said that they have nothing on our people, you know. But I explained, look, we had to depend on each other through the winters and our, our, our forefathers, you know. And I got to give a shout out to our forefathers, you know, our Irish descent, the outlaws, the moonshine makers, them kind of guys that no one wanted. We were lower than the lowest of the, of the Irish society when it came to the United States when they came over and became citizens and given land, uh, they end up in Eastern Kentucky for a reason, the South, or at Central Appalachia for a reason. But how do you think built our roads? Exactly. And, but and, we, all, well, we all had to stick together, you know, kind of yeah. back to what you're saying about our forefathers. I mean, we it, it was all about family yeah. and hospitality to one another. We didn't We couldn't just go by people on the side of the road and not talk to them. This, mm-hmm. that, that was a part of everyday life. You had to rely on one another, or if not, you weren't going to make it. Our forefathers, they had to live through some of the roughest times. We have no clue. We, we have no clue. No, I mean, like, we think we have it rough nowadays. Yeah. Like, they, yeah. they, they, there's a iPhones, reason that they were eating I, squirrel brains and yeah. turtle and all that stuff yeah. back in the day, because that's all yeah. they had. But they I also had so. each other. I get so sick and tired of people telling me how rough they got it with their iPhone 12. Yeah, exactly. You know, you got the, you got the, Oh, my, my internet's out for a few yeah, hours. You, you oh, got no. the power, you got the power of the world in your fingertips where you can learn how to build a, a rocket ship, but you're worried about chasing a cat or TikTok. Yeah. Watching some other person be, do something. And, and so you can imitate that, you know, there's no excuses anymore in our world where you no. cannot be the best superior person you can be because everything's right at your fingertips. 